Hello everyone, welcome to this uh, video, um, Fire and Speaking, and to those who know me, hi, and for any new viewers, my name is Farron and uh, I love scale models and this is my world of scale modeling. Um, each video is going to be ta uh, titled um, Farron Scale Models and um, previous two videos have been on my um, F18 by Academy and 132nd scale. I've now moved up to the um, ordinance now. I've been um, painting the uh, pylons and the uh, Mark 82 500 pound bombs um, which are here. Okay, now this is um, a reference color scheme I've copied. The instructions just say green, um, and to be honest, they look pretty crap. And I noticed on reference pictures that the bombs actually have this rough texture on them. And I'm going to show you today how I done that. Okay, so um, just bear with me. I'll show you everything that I that you need to do this. Okay. I still need to do a wash on it um, and I've got to put a couple of decals on it but the base coats are down that's what's important um, these uh, paints uh, I'll, I'll put a little bit of gloss varnish over that one to basically protect it while I was painting the second band uh, and these bands are really difficult to paint um, but uh, I'll show you how you do it okay let's get started materials you're going to need are uh, of course you're going to need some a bomb that's been prepped Okay, this has been taken off the sprue, glued, smooth. You don't have to get rid of the seam across here. You do at the back here, but across here you don't. What we're going to do in a moment is I'm just going to unplug these uh, cocktail sticks and we're going to go over it with a rough file so that this Vallejo plastic putty will adhere to the smooth surface. Okay, and I've got two of them, but I'm going to show you one, obviously. So to begin with, I'm just going to take a rough file, one of these. Um, I think there's a squadron, I'm not sure. And all you're going to do is just go over it haphazardly. You know, rougher the better. Okay. Ideally, do it before you do the uh, masking. I never plan ahead on these videos, I really should. Okay, there we go, that's that bit. That's just a uh, reason for this plug is to stop any of the putty going into the hole where it fixes onto the pylon. And this is just actually. I know what I will do. Mm -hmm. We're in the camera angle, well done, Farron. Nothing special here. <laughs> it's, it's all basics. Um, getting a new PC next month. Gonna get myself. Uh, gonna build my own, all custom made. Gonna buy the new AMD Ryzen chip. I know it's been out about a year, but for me that is a new one. Okay, on here. Okay, we have the uh, plastic putty. Need a bit more. It's just an old pack lunch fruit container no frills here. Uh, don't use your best brushes okay because this stuff will ruin your brushes it will get right into the bowl the ferrule here and it'll clog up and it'll make all your bristles you know stick out so what you want to do on here is basically get an old brush this brush I've had donkey's years um, it's a Dale Rowney filbert brush well it was a filbert brush but now it's ideal for what I'm doing on here so I'm going to move that out of the way get a good dollop of the uh, putty and we're just going to lay it on this might dry quite quick today because it's like 30 degrees here in Wales it's bloody hot and if you can hear that like water drip in the background that's my uh, aircon unit 60 quid off eBay bargain and all you're doing is just spread it around evenly until you get the um, oh, let's see what just Diffuse that light in a minute. You're going to get sort of like a rough texture like that. It doesn't have to be, because um, on the um, actual photograph it looks like it's ribbed and, uh, and it's done with precision. But at this scale, I didn't know how to replicate it, so I'm just going to stipple it on and take it from there. And 
that's what I'd done with the first one and uh, I was quite happy the way it turned out. And of course, <laughs> it acts like a primer. Get it around this bit at the back where the tape is. Yeah. There you go, jobs are good. Just a little bit more. Nice thing is, if you think you got too much on, when it dries, just sand it down and you, you will get a, a good effect. I sand them down anyway. So if you can see that, look, sorry. I get carried away, I forget I'm on camera. Uh, Mr. Compressor. To be honest with you, this putty from Vallejo is nice to work with. Um, if you're an armor builder, it is fantastic for um, doing the um, like the iron cast effect. So, like, because uh, when the tank turrets came out of the uh, the molds, as it were, in the factory, you had this casting effect on them. And um, the Vallejo putty is extremely good for doing that. Right, I've got to let that dry now. Um, so, I can either do this one off camera, another one, but um, this one here is what I sprayed earlier. Okay, now the paints I've used for this, okay, to complete the painting, are these here. Yeah? Okay, so what we've got here is XF3 yellow, XF60 dark yellow, and XF58 olive green, and Federal Standard F FS 36320 Dark Compass Ghost Grey, okay, which is for the tail part of the uh, of the bomb. Okay, after because um, I actually um, once this was actually dried after that bomb there was dried, I forgot about this tripod now. Okay, the uh, what I done is I took this effect. XF60 dark yellow by Tamiya and, and basically um, on the top of the bomb because where you got the fixing points this is going to be the top we uh, applied a sh uh, a, just a nice shaded amount over the top area yeah because this is a lovely complementary color for highlighting olive green and olive drab all sorts of military colors military greens rather and um, because if you add white to one of these as a highlight, it just goes the completely opposite direction. This is a complementary colour and it will keep the uh, tone, but it also gives you that light highlight. So with this colour here then, okay, as you can see, if I show you that there, so this here will uh, complement this. So that's your, that's your pre-highlight, let's say. And you just then basically paint that in light shades of this. When I say light shades, I mean dusting, sorry, with the airbrush, you just go over it lightly, giving it until you get the desired effect. But uh, you don't want to cover up the, the dark yellow. What you want to do is you want to basically try and make that highlight stand out. If you think you've gone over again, let it dry, reapply the highlight, and go back with the green again. It's best done with an airbrush. I don't think you can do it with a hand brush, but um, this day and age, I, I say about 80% of modelers have uh, an airbrush of some sort in their repertoire. So um, while that's drying, there's not a lot I can do other than waffle on. What I have been doing is the. Um, let's just move these out of the way. This is just a vlog rather than a tutorial. Um, got these uh, all prepped for the. Uh, let's have a look at that. On here is all latex, all in, all over the panel lines, like I did with the aircraft. Again, we're going to be using the smoke and the matte varnish mixed together into a very thin mix. 
Um, basically, we're going to just mist over all of this, not completely. We're just going to follow where we put the latex and where it dried. You know, it's just going to be overspray. So and then we can just peel off all of the latex, and we'll get the desired effect. You know what we're looking for. The um, F18 itself at the moment is drying. I painted the um, wheel wells on it last night. Well, not last night. Was it last night? Yes, it was. So it should be actually dry now. There they are, right over there. Um, it's only about three feet away, but it looks like about a mile away. But no, it's there. Um, I'm not going to bring it over because I've got too much on the desk as it is. But um, that is coming along nicely. I forgot to put some decals on, which I was meant to put on the wings and, and the tail stabilizers. That was the no step and warning um, uh, decals. Uh, but it shouldn't be a problem. They can go on. I'm going to have to wait for that to dry, I'm afraid. That is sopping wet. But what I will do, for your amusement, is I'm going to do the yellow bands. Okay, and the way we do the yellow bands, once it's masked off and we've got our yellow banded area, we're going to base coat the band, in the intended band colour, in dark yellow first before we paint the yellow. This will act as a base colour for the yellow. Um, basically we, it means we only need to do one or two passes with this color on this color if I spray directly onto the green I'll be doing about 20 bloody coats of this so we're going to put the dark XF60 yellow on first let it dry and it takes a few seconds so I'm going to be thinning it with uh, leveling thinner from Mr. Hobby and then we're going to go over it with the um, yellow so I'm going to get these guys masked off I wish I had a pause function on my camera, but if I stop it, I've got to save the video, and then I've got to locate the video, and it's a pain in the ass, so I'm just going to keep it running, and you're just going to have to put up with me, okay? Well, like I say, this is just a vlog, it's not really a tutorial, All right, this is just the way how I do things, um, whether or not there is a correct way of doing other things for your hobby, I mean, I just do what I feel comfortable with. Um, and I think everybody does that. I don't want to say, oh, I want my model to look like what that guy does on YouTube. I mean, at the end of the day, you, you can you can try your best to do it, but I say just just be yourself. And you know and and just do the best you can. Right, let's see if I can just get a general idea. So I've got something more side by side here because I want to um, get it kind of straight to a certain extent. Got you. Because as you've got a ragged surface on here, jagged, not ragged. It's only ragged rocks, as John from Boss would say. Just pull it a little tight, and it'll grip it. And this is a Tamiya free mill tape, and it's awesome for corners. So, yeah, it's fairly good. It's fairly good. Uh, and then just to secure it, just use a bit of. Um, because then you see it will unravel. Just use a bit of masking tape just to uh, protect the green from the yellow. And now I'm going to get another one. Okay, and I'm just basically going to roughly eyeball it. To be honest, I'm not fussed if the bands are not identical. Okie dokie. And the other thing I noticed on these bombs, right, when they're because when if they come back from a mission and they've not been deployed, they're not been used, I mean they're they're disarmed and then basically they're put back into stores. But through handling, they they will get a lot of um, scrapes on the sides here because where they've been lowered in and out of the racks. Okay, so for when I do the weathering, um, I'm gonna get a, a sander. 
smooth one and just go over it like that gently and you'll get these like little grey marks camera's not really picking up, I haven't got a great camera I hope to get one at some point but that's the general idea of it let's put it out of the way okay and again with this I'm just gonna just put oh that's too fat It's a lot of uh, faffing around just to get two simple yellow lines. But I found if I use a decal, I'm there forever manipulated with a bloody paintbrush, and that is more annoying than actually uh, than painting. Okay, just. Left some of the bloody um, paint in there. Like this is Mr. Level Infinite. I just decant it into a into one of these bottles with a with a pipette. Uh, yeah, I picked uh, three bottles up for two ninety nine off eBay. But then it's much better than buying like a pack of ten of pipettes off um, eBay or more hobby store because um, in the long run you save money. I just got a nice brown medical um, standard. Oh man, this is dirty. I didn't anticipate this. Oh, I forgot I left a bloody airbrush because I painted the tail on that one in dark ghost grey. Oh, never mind. Let's just get this cleaned up. I had a re <laughs> oh, I must well tell you, I mean, uh, I'm no longer with my girlfriend anymore. Boo hoo, woes me. No. Glad to be bloody rid of her, to be honest with you. Nothing but a freaking gold digger. And if you're watching this, <laughs> tough. Told it to her face anyway. Huge red mark on my face that day. I don't care. All I care about now is I can get a new PC. Because my kids have had their all their upgrades this year, and uh, they're happy. Everything's Windows 10 and all updated, and everything's mega fast. And I've got my old Intel Quad Core with uh, well, a graphics card got on there. I've got an old GeForce 610 in there, I think. And I updated all my Blizzard software, you know, my Diablo, and um, what's the other one? Uh, Starcraft 2, Starcraft. Because they re-released StarCraft as, uh, and they've re done a rehash on it. it. Looks really cool. And now it's all been updated. It's jerky as anything. So I've saved a hundred quid so far, and I'm going to use that to actually uh, go towards a new computer. And I'm, like I said, I'm going to I'm going to I'm looking at the AMD Ryzen 524G processor because all the Ryzen cards, uh, sorry, processes, you can actually um, overclock and get a better game performance. And the graphics card I'm looking at is a 1050 or a 1080 Ti by uh, NVIDIA. And that's about 400 quid apparently, but I'll shop around before I commit myself. Anyway, back to the uh, actual uh, part of the hobby bit. So this here is just basically going to be lightly dusted. Dust it, don't flood it. Okay. You do, if you do a dusting first like this, you're creating a seal between the two layers of the tape, and hopefully it shouldn't seep underneath the, tap, uh, the tape if there's if there is a gap. So you're just basically creating a foundation. Just want to get a nice even coat. And do it like that, boy. Yes, you know, up here in the valleys in Halloween. The weather is very hot and the sheep are very tired. The men they got the wellers and the sheep are very scared. Bit of Welsh humour. Okay, so yeah, that's all that is to it on that bit. Just pull that paint back in. Pop. Thin this little remnant of paint with 
instead of flushing it away, put some thinner in it. Do a blowback, get it nice and thin, and pour it back in the pot. And there you go, you saved a bit of paint. Do that about a dozen times to 20 times. Effect your paint is pretty thinned. <laughs> My uh, XF1 black is like tap water, but um, that's ideal because I can put that down to a very low um, air pressure, like between 10 and 15 psi, because the consistency is like tap water, but the pigment is there. You know, I can do really tiny lines. You know, this is a 0.3 needle. That's like lines of a biro. Is it like a line of a biro? Here's a biro. What does the biro say? Oh! Look what a 0.3 can do compared to an, uh, to a biro. It needs to spend 600 pound on a airbrush to do a point with a point 0.2 needle when you've got a point 0.3. But anyway, each to their own. I say, you want it, you have it. You got the money, spend it, have it, not, whatever. Take a loan out, see a shifty guy. Get some money to buy that perfect airbrush. I don't think I got that one. <laughs> no, that ex-wife bought me that fair play. Right, sorry, onto the yellow. Give it a shake. As you see, it's a very vibrant colour yellow. It's very similar to uh, the British training yellow. Do, 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 do. Just want to... Just enough. Yeah? Not too much. Okay. Check your flow. All good. Same as before, light dusting coats. Now just keep going backwards and forwards until you feel you've got a nice, even yellow band. Because uh, once all the four bomb bombs are all being um, painted, and I think they have a deco on the grey section. They would be uh, washed in a uh, Agrax Earth Shade from Games Workshop, so that color. Brilliant color to go with green. And uh, anti yellow, bring all the little details. Plus, we're going to um, gently scrape away at that green paint with a file to give it that weathered look. Okay, that's it. Ba boom Job done. Right. Well, this is tammy paint, so I'm, gonna, I'm not going to let this sit in a cup in this temperature because it is really warm today and paint is drying exceedingly fast. Okay, in you go. I've just done that for speed. Okay, airbrush. Done. So what I did get the other day, and it came through the post this afternoon. Ow, sorry. I'll show you that in a minute, but let's have a look at this, because this has dried already. That's one. For the moments of truth. So my friend in France, I think he's in France, Jean. Here we go. So this, yeah, it's a bit wonky, yeah, but you know, you're only gonna notice if you're gonna keep rotating it like this. But when it's actually sat on the, the pylon, you're not gonna be you'll be none wiser, okay? But um yeah, that's one band done and it is a bit wonky, a bit too wonky maybe, but it's only a model, it's a toy. 
it's not real I'm not going into competitions so yeah just got to paint so on this one now I'll do the sorry I'll do the second band off camera okay and then I'll paint the tails uh, and I'll do complete the other two bombs get them attached to their pylon because their pylons are no, that's not it come here their pylon this is their pylon so they will sit on basically like get on there it'll sit on there like that okay yeah take my word for it yeah, so like that <laughs> nice get out of the way yes um as I was saying, got uh, got some loot through the uh, post today. Nothing exciting, but it helps a big deal with rescribing. And it's Dymo crazy tape. I say crazy tape. You remember when you used to like print off the labels with a little, with a little gadget like that? Well, um, found these online, eBay, uh, through uh, W H Smith. Three rolls, nine pounds ninety nine. Um, hell of a lot on there. Nine millimeters by three meters. So we've got what? Three, three. So we've got nine meters there altogether. So that's like, you know, 30 feet of um, Dymo tape. And we can use this to rescribe our panel lines. And this is what I've been using uh, on the uh, F18. Because the roll I've got at the moment is almost gone. So I thought I'd better get some new. So those came through the post and I'm happy. Also co waiting on in the post is the Hasegawa F104G. Uh, got it from Poland on eBay for 24 quid. Old kit from the 80s I think. Not too sure but um, I couldn't find any aftermarket products for it via Edward. I'm not going to go to Air Res. I hate Air Res products. I've had nothing but problems from them and their customer service is shite. Um, I sent them two emails and never got a single response. I uh, sent emails to the place where I actually bought it from, no response. They said get in contact with them. Um, that's burnt me for life with the uh, ARS, so I won't be uh, bother bothering with them ever again. Um, the items are effed up on me. Well, I wouldn't say effed up, they just don't fit. And there's a 148 scale F14B cockpit for the uh, Hobby Boss kit. And um, you can only sand so much off before you actually start uh, removing detail and, uh, and I couldn't remove any more and uh, it was still proving problems for the fit so I won't be going down that route so if there's no aftermarket parts for this um, kit I imagine the um, Italeri variant of the aftermarket products would hopefully fit uh, the Hasegawa so um, I've got a few emails to send to um, Edward and find out if that's the case. Anyway, that's pretty much it today. Um, next update is going to be on the whole aircraft again. Hope to have the wheels on it on the next one, hopefully. And if I do, that's going to be great because then I can stick on all the stores. And um, I think that's it. Unless you want to stick around for a bit more, and we'll do this. On this I'll show you again how I do it yeah why not what the hell today's a good whoops today's a good day for modeling and I'm also a big Bob Ross fan yeah my dad does oil painting and he's bugging me to do oil painting like him he thinks I've got it <laughs> I've never done an oil painting or any painting or picture in my entire life and um, he's saying, have a go. They won't let me use his stuff. I've got to buy my own. Which is fair enough, I guess. I wouldn't let me use my model stuff. So, fair's fair enough. Okay. Getting, getting our thinner. And I want about third full. There's a bit of yellow in there. Um, yeah, get some matte varnish. I 
think that's about three. Oh, I'll put one more. Okay. Um, I really want to get the uh, Mr. Hobby clear grey because this is like well, this is as we know this is the smoky colour, but I definitely want the clear grey so I can do this effect, which looks a bit better than the smoke. Yeah, that's a nice consistency. Yeah, watch. See, it's just about spread out by itself. That's a nice consistency, I think. Get that excess off over there. Yeah, so I might be dabbling in the old Bob Ross at some point. Who knows? I watched a documentary back on the on YouTube on the Bob Ross channel. It's got um, you know the guy was at X Forces and um, he was stationed in Canada for 12 years. You should watch it. It's uh, it's really interesting. The guy was one of the kindest men they said you could ever meet and talk to. Anyway, okay. I digress a lot. Get that flowing. Right then. Oh, right then. Over we go. So the screen saver just went on my. I've got little muffled effects of uh, latex on here as well, so I'm just going to... I'm going over them as well. As well as the panel lines. Don't have to be 100% neat. It's weathering after all. Okay. When you do it, make sure you get these um, top bits going along here, okay? This is where it meets the uh, top of the wing, the underside of the wing, and um, it's just like creating a, a very faint shadow, as it were. So, on the other side, same thing. Just take it all across. Don't do one whole application at once, just build it up. As you're going to a huge pool on it. And just take your time. I mean, I said before I used to rush my models, but I wouldn't dare do that now. Stick that back in the pot of stone. I have got a four of these all together. And then we got these as well. For the 500 pound bombs. I was going to do the snake eyes, but I put the wrong fins on. Never mind. Stuff happens. Just blend that out. I'm not going to see this section much. Sorry if I've gone out of focus and out of frame, whatever. Because just there is my tripod with my webcam on the top. I mean, I don't use very sophisticated air. Um, what you call it, uh, equipment. It's just a basic 1080p camera, web camera from Hewlett Packard. Um, I would rather have a nice Sony video camera so I can zoom in, you know, and have the, have the camera at a comfortable distance. But um, I want to get my PC first and then I'm going to get the camera after. And then I'll do a showcase on the PC <laughs> if I can get it to work. But I'm gonna I'm saving up for that. Ok, 
Okay. And when this bit's done, don't worry, get a hair on there. It's part of the effect. It's going to come off anyway. Now, um, when this is done, I'll be doing a salting method on it as well. Number three, it doesn't take very long to do this, but it's brushing on all the um, latex, that's the um, time consuming part, it's like when you mask canopies, it takes you know, a good half hour to get do a good job and then once you finish painting it, it's like two seconds to rip it all off. Uh -huh. Four inches away now. There we go. Number four. So if I hold it up like that, I'll go up like that. And uh uh. Not gonna work. And of course at the end of this field I will be doing another model kit and um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to, I want you guys to, uh, I'm going to put a list of models up and I want you to choose which one you want done. You'd like me, you'd like to see me do. Because I've um, got a fair few in a stash at the moment and they do need to be done. And of course, in between gaming and models, you know, I can let, you know, if I get bored of doing this, you know, blow some steam off on Doom. Or uh, pretend to be a wizard in Diablo and kill monsters. Yeah, and just generally have a bit of fun. And you guys, gamers, play games? Let us know in the comments. And tell us what your favourite game is. I want to try that um, Overwatch. That looks pretty cool. But I would have had it ages and ages ago. But my system is just what I got now. It's just too damn slow. Just saying, with all the updates that come in now, it just makes all the software that I've got modern software on an old computer obsolete. Crazy, I know, but it's true. Let's see if I can squeeze this tiny little drop onto these two. This is what's going to hold the tins and the uh, other um, bit of um, targeting um, hardware. Don't 
don't worry about the uh, matte varnish. It's going to be spread matte anyway. Just mix that up in a cup. Got a good flow. Oh yeah, go for the kill. Right, that's everything done for now. I just got this bombs to finish off and that's it, run out there. And that's it, I've been babbling on for 41 minutes and I've enjoyed every second of it. Anyway, like I said, this is not really a tutorial, even though I did show you how I do those bombs, but um, I, I don't have the savvy to do the uh, start to finish and the editing and all that on the computer, nor the patience, come to think of it. So uh, me doing it this way is comfortable for me. And, um, and what feedback I've had from you guys so far has been brilliant. It's really appreciated. Um, only a handful of viewers at the moment, but hey, better than none. And I'm truly grateful, I really am. And I uh, appreciate you guys watching and leaving your comments. I read every one of them as best I can. In fact, I don't think I've missed a comment yet. And, uh, and I'm really, um, I really look forward to your comments on this video. So, until the next time, I shall bid you adieu, farewell, a vie de zain, au revoir, goodbye, ta-da, TTFN, until the next one. Thanks for watching, all the best. Where's that bloody stop? Where is it? Right, there you go. See, me and Tech, really cool.